What's going on, everybody? Sorry, I had to had to make my tea. That's why I'm a little bit late to my show. Tonight, we are going to be going over how to do online arbitrage and more importantly, how online arbitrage works with textbooks. How is this even a possibility? How to make thousands of dollars from your living room and how to do it the right way, how to, how to actually do it to make profit and not just do it to, uh, I don't know, make theoretical profit. A lot of people sit down, they get all excited about different aspects of online arbitrage, but they don't, they don't really understand it. They don't really get what's going on. They don't really understand the key components to making an online arbitrage business work and scale and to be able to do this long term. So a couple of years ago, I was living in my car, I was traveling the country, and I was tired of going in thrift stores. So I was like, all right, I'm just gonna chill at Starbucks and max out my credit cards and just buy textbooks online. So that's what I was doing. I was sitting there and I was purchasing books and I thought I was making money off these books and I was having them all sent to my cousin's house. And he was packing and prepping these books for me and shipping them to Amazon. And if you looked at like our profit, projected profit spreadsheet, we were supposed to make like 15, 20 grand. And what happened was I didn't follow the rules that I should have been following. I, I learned a lot, but there's certain things you got to look out for. And there's th certain things, there's certain red flags you just can't bypass. And I'm going to cover as much of this as I can tonight. Uh, and if you guys have questions, feel free to, to ask them and I'll get to them at the end. But without further ado, let's get into this. So I'm going to share my screen with you guys. I'm going to take you guys through a short PowerPoint that's going to uh, kind of walk you through what's going on. And then I'm actually going to source some books with you. All right, so online arbitrage. So obviously this is great for this time of year when people are at home, they're not able to go out. You can make thousands of dollars from your living room. You can source 20, the technique I use and I, I abide by these rules. I don't source books that are, are not at least $20 profit. The books have to be at least $20 profit. That gives us cushion and you're not going to lose money. If, you, if you're sourcing books that are only five or $10 profit, all it's going to take is a little bit of price fluctuation for all your profits to go away. And we're only going to focus on books that have high demand. So we're not going to cross our fingers and get books that have super high sales ranks and hope that they sell. We are going to get books that actually sell and they sell often. So there's two methods and I'm going to cover, I'll cover by watching this video, you're going to understand uh, the key components to online arbitrage. So you'll understand the free and paid version of these methods. But uh, in this video, I'm going to go over the paid version just because we'll be able to uh, actually get more profitable books to, to show you guys on, on live video. So the free method, you're not going to be using eFlip and the paid method you are. So the purpose of using eFlip is just to generate a list of books that could be profitable. So with the free method, if you guys do choose not to use eFlip, what you can do is just look up different titles of books on Amazon and, and get lists from different places. So get lists from schools, get lists from... I don't know, wherever you can find a list of textbooks, you literally just, you can go to bestsellers textbooks on Amazon and go through the list. But eFlip's amazing because you can manipulate the list and say, hey, look, I only want to look at books that are 40 to $60. And I only want to see books that sell, um, you know, a hundred times a year. So the whole reason why online arbitrage is even possible is there is something called seasonality. So the books go up during textbook season and they go down during the off season. So if we look here, you can see that that black line increases during September when the kids go back to class, it decreases during the off season and then it increases again during January. So what we're going to do is we're going to buy the book low. We're going to buy the book when the price tanks and we're going to sell the book when the price uh, goes back up. So you can make, you know, a lot depending on how much money you want to invest i'd say for every ten thousand dollars i'm using the big number here if you invest ten thousand dollars you can expect to get between six thousand and ten thousand dollars profit so that's sixteen thousand to twenty thousand dollars back in your bank account for every ten thousand dollars you spend so you you take ten thousand dollars you take 
probably it's probably going to take you I don't know 40 hours to source all these books, and you're going to get um, that that return of 60 to 100 percent ROI. That's being very realistic. Some people will try to tell you they're making 200 percent ROI doing online arbitrage, and while that is possible, um, this technique that we're going to be using is way safer. Uh, because we have a very high profit uh, profit number. We're not going under $20 profit. So what that does is it allows us to have a very uh, big cushion. It's a, it's a $20 cushion. So if the price drops $15, uh, we're still $5 profit. Whereas someone who's toting that they're making 200% ROI on flips, if their average profit per item is $10, and that book drops fifteen dollars in price. You are now negative five dollars. So this is this is a very safe method. So let's get into this, guys. I'm going to open up eFlip, and we're going to be using outliers. So these triggers, I call these triggers right here, ultra high demand triggers. So these triggers, th these are for books that sell. They sell year round and they sell a lot. So as you can see, I set the price price range from 10 to 20. We're actually not going to find much here. I find most of the uh, books that are going to flip are between the 20 and 50 dollar price range. So we're gonna we're gonna raise this up a little bit, but this is uh, ultra high demand trigger one. I have like 30 plus triggers that I give you guys in my course. Buy low, sell high. It's an online arbitrage course. The link is in the description below for my course, The Book Business Blueprint. If you guys are interested in that, I'll talk more about that later. But um, yeah, all, all the triggers that I have in my course, I literally have screenshots just like this. So you guys can, it's like a cookie cutter solution for you guys to input these and generate list of books that could be very profitable. So the second trigger, we I'm gonna go ahead and set these. Uh, second trigger, so that first trigger, that's looking at the very first price on Amazon. So just so I can get some good flips for you guys, I'm going to go ahead and raise that to 40. So we're going to look for everything from, this is a sweet spot. I, I find that between 20 and $50 is uh, where, where the most profitable splits or most profitable flips are. So price number two with this demand, with this trigger set, we're just looking for very high demand books. We're not looking for, I call it my stair step triggers. It's a set of triggers where we want the first price to be a little bit lower and we want the second price to be significantly higher and we want the third price to be even higher. So what, what the stair step triggers are doing is they're showing us books that are about to increase in price very, very soon. So they're showing us books that are going to, they might be $40 right now that that might be the going price, but within a week, the price could be $80. So stair step triggers allow for very quick flips. High demand triggers, however, these are gonna show us uh, books that are very current in circulation. So these books, when you get them, if you get them, if you purchase one of these books from this trigger set, you know that it's a book that sells often. So you're not gonna, you're not gonna be sitting on the book for very long. These, these flips happen fast. So for the buy box, Let's see what I set this at. Uh, we're going to set this at 80. And the reason why we're, did I set the used buy box at 80? Uh, used buy box at 30. The, the new buy box we're going to set at 80. And the reason why we want the new buy box to be at 80 is we want the price of these books to be a little bit more expensive. And we don't want to have books that have a new price that is very uh, cheap because if you have a new price that is low the price of the book There's not going to be much room for arbitrage if the new price is low. That means That's the cap for the used price if the new price is $80 The the used price is never going to go over 80. So if the new price is 50 I'm not I, I don't want to pursue books that have a very low new price So I want the new price to be significantly higher then what I'm fishing for and what I'm fishing for here is uh, about $30 books to flip. Amazon, we're going to go ahead and increase this to 80 as well. We're going to include no offer and we're going to bring our sales rank down to 100 
100,000. There we go, baby. E score, we're going to raise that up. Let's raise this up to, let's see what I said that. 48. So that means the book has had at least one day with a sale in the last 106, 180 days. And we're not going to touch used offers. So with this list, really what this list is doing is it's generating within what I found to be the best price range to find profitable books, which is 20 to 50 dollar books. They generally have more arbitrage opportunity. Um, and these books are just super high demand. So we're, we're finding books within this price range and within this demand range. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm just going to hover over this little Keepa graph icon. And for you guys that don't know much about Keepa, uh, all we're looking at is that black line. We want to look at that black line because that's the price. And we're looking for this camel back motion so we're looking for an up down so this is a good one living with art so the keepa chrome extension is free there's also a paid version but really all we need is that black line that's all we're looking at zoom out for you guys okay so you can see this black line, it goes up and down. That's good. That means there's price fluctuation. So this book used to be $69 in September. And then it tanked down all the way down to $17. And then it didn't really have a huge spike this last year. So what we're looking for, if you guys see this huge spike here, we want more of that. We want, we want to see this price going up, down, and then up again. It doesn't, it doesn't have a huge spike in spring, so I'm not gonna pursue this book. So when I'm, when I'm hovering over this Keepa icon, all I'm looking for, that's what I'm looking for right there. Do you guys see that? That is, that is perfect right there, that up and down motion for that black line. So let's open this up. This is a perfect example. All right, so I'm gonna look at this over the course of a year. So look at this book. This book increases to $70, increases to about 70 bucks here. And during the off season, it drops below 30. So I have a, I have a list, I call it the money list. This isn't my actual money list. This is my example money list. Otherwise, you guys would screenshot this and take all my profitable splits. I don't know why I keep saying splits. It's because I've been making been making listing videos all day. Uh, flips. I've been making videos about how to combat split shipments for my team. So what you can do is you can enter the approved buy price and approve list price. So I have a formula in here. So when I enter the list price, I'm going to enter this at, uh, let's say we saw it go down to $27. So I'm going to enter 27 here and approved buy price. Oh, my bad. 27 is approved buy price. Cause that was a low price. Uh, approved list price is going to be 70. So let's see what this comes out to. And it's not going to work for us. Copy this. I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. My list is broken. But what this list is going to do, if you see here, it's going to uh, it's going to calculate the Amazon fees in, and it's going to spit out a number. There we go. So $26 profit for this flip. So literally as we're watching this video right now, whoever wants to go buy this book can go buy this book because it's going for 27 bucks. You could easily flip this book for probably, probably close to 75, $75. Cause you see how, how high this, 
uh, black lines getting, the higher that black line gets, the better. But keep in mind that black line, it's that black line is kind of worst case scenario because we also have the prime bump. So we also have, we're, we're prime sellers, so we can sell the book prime for about 20% higher than the low merchant. And that black line's only showing the low merchant. So yeah, this is a technique, guys. It's uh, it's pretty simple. And I mean, there's a lot more to it when it comes to like buying decisions and just different ways of of really automating this. You can you can automate your online arbitrage so you get notifications whenever the price drops occur. But um, it's it's all about nothing else matters if there's not seasonality present. So we need to find that seasonality first. I'm gonna go ahead and open up some Q and A, and I'm gonna answer your questions. Let me know. I'm always, whenever I make these videos, I don't know if I'm talking to like a complete beginner or somebody who already knows how to flip books online. So let me know what kind of questions you guys have and I will answer them. Junkman saying after fees and shipping, uh, break even, sell 75. No, it's, it's not break even. Cause if you buy for 25, there's still about $26 profit to be had. I'll show you. So if we look at that, that money list, zoom out for you guys real quick. So if we look at this list here, um, so we're going to sell the book for $70. We purchased the book for 27. This is the math. 70 minus 27. So I'm going to actually break this down for you guys. So 70, that's the sales price. So minus 27. Uh, the fees is going to be 15% of 70. So 70 times 0.15. Uh, and we're looking at seven, let's say $8 in FBA fees. And let's say a dollar inbound shipping. It's not going to be that much, but let's say it's that much. So we take all these fees into consideration. And it's going to be 70, 70 minus all of this. So let's do that cell. If we add all these up, it's $46. So $46 minus 70. That's $24 profit, $24 profit. And that's, I kind of blew up those numbers there. So it's actually, it's probably gonna be more profit than that. Let's see what else we got Aspen in here. He's asking Romer, how does someone get ungated in DVDs or CDs? You need to get an invoice from a trusted distributor, order at least 10 units. And um, yeah, make sure the product that you order is actually gated on Amazon. So don't just order some random DVD, find a DVD that you're gated in on Amazon from a trusted distributor, order 10 units of that, boom, ship it in, you'll get ungated. Can I see your equation in column just for my reference? So all the equation is, is Sales price minus what you paid for the item. So sales price minus what you paid for the item. Here, I'll show you real quick. It's gonna get complicated. So G4 is the sales price, your anticipated sales price minus the approved buy price. So whatever you're purchasing the book for minus the sales price times 15%. So this is a 15% Amazon fee minus 6.5 because that's what I found FBA fees to be. That's a little bit, even 6.5 is a little bit high, but with textbooks, you are going to see a heftier FBA fee. Oh, I did not share my screen with you. 
on that. I apologize, but hopefully you got what I was saying. You can replay that and uh, do the math. If you guys want to, if you guys are watching this replay, just go back to when I was sharing my screen with you guys, and I I do briefly click on that section. Only currently flipping books on eBay at the moment because in England shipping books to Amazon is a moment. It is a nightmare uh, due to COVID nineteen. Yeah. So there's a lot of opportunity flipping books from eBay to Amazon. Um, whenever you find a profitable flip on Amazon, you should also look on eBay to see if you can get an even better deal with that book. Not sure if you said it, but pretty sure uh, do not use prime shipping for OA. Yeah, so you're not supposed to buy prime and sell prime, but I've never heard of anyone getting in trouble for that. And you could buy prime and sell on a different platform. So if you buy prime and sell on eBay, you could do that. I don't think it's an issue guys. I think you can buy prime. I it's against terms of service, but I know someone who's done over half a million and she does not abide by that rule. She didn't even know about that rule and she buys prime all the time. So I get, I get why Amazon doesn't want us to do that. Amazon doesn't want us to do that because if you buy prime, sell prime, you're kind of, you're not abusing their system, but you're overloading their system, their fulfillment by Amazon system, because they're having to ship it to a seller, just to have it shipped back into their fulfillment center. But um, yeah, just something to be, something to look out for. How accurate is your 20% above merchant fulfilled use price in calculating anticipated FBA price and how is it calculated? Um, I'm not sure about the last part of that question, but in terms of how accurate is a 20%, you will see, you will actually see way bigger than that. Sometimes you'll see 50%. Once I bought a hundred dollar textbook and I sold it for $200 prime bump, I bought it for a hundred and I sold it for 200. And if you guys noticed, I didn't really go into prime bump too much in this video because I don't think, I think a prime, the prime bump is a nice thing, but it's so volatile and it's so temporary. Um, you should not place bets on the prime bump, place bets on the seasonality of the book, the up and down, the natural curve, the natural cycle or roller coaster cycle of the book. And if there's a prime bump, if there's a difference between the low price and the prime price, that's icing on the cake. How can we get approved for restricted books that we want to sell on eFlip? Man, if if I knew that question, I don't know if I would tell you guys. <laughs> answer first of all, because I have my service restricted inventory.com. I don't know the answer to that question myself. Um, I have heard of one person getting ungated in textbooks that had a gated account. They're not letting people in. They're not letting people into the textbook category. And the person, he's one of my mentors. The only reason he got in is he's a massive bookseller and he actually is a rep. So he had someone he was talking to on the phone and he was purchasing new books. He was purchasing massive quantities of new textbooks, which are like $200 each. And he was providing invoices. So he was buying directly from the publisher and providing invoices. So you guys could try that route and spend thousands of dollars, or you could use restrictedinventory.com. My service, my account is ungated in popular textbooks. Um, so if you guys are interested, if you guys ever find books that you wanna flip, I will sell them for you and pay you 50% of net profits. Grind hard, well done, sir, and welcome to the freaking web. Restrictedinventory.com, baby. Let's get a couple more questions in here. Then I'm gonna go work out, get my quarantine workout for the night. All right, we got Garrett in the house saying my profit margins for the past couple months is about 33%. Is that solid? Depends on what your business model is. Is, is that for online arbitrage? Is that for cherry picking? Like I was saying, uh, in terms of profit margin, I like to think in terms of I like to think in terms of ROI more than profit margin. Um, and just cause I'm more comfortable thinking that way. 
I've, I've like thought these businesses out. And with online arbitrage, about 60 to 100% is pretty solid. Um, see, like if you're doing things right, you shouldn't go below 60% ROI. Uh, when it comes to other business models with books, ROI is like infinite. ROI is like that 1,000%. It, it's crazy. But with other models of books, what you do have to realize is there's so much more cost um, that, that aren't factored into the book. Uh, with online arbitrage, you're paying a shit ton for the book. You're paying a lot for the book, but there's not a lot of other fees you have. Some booksellers, they pay virtually nothing for the book. But they have so many labor costs. They have so they have warehouse costs. They have all these other costs. And yeah, they have a, a, a penny book or a zero, a free book that they sold for hundreds of dollars, but they're not really factoring in the cost of the book. Like they're, if, if you look at the amount of books they actually ship in, uh, they're probably paying a couple bucks for each book they ship in after all said and done after paying for the employees, paying for benefits, paying for warehouse space, all this stuff adds up. Eat, sleep, Amazon. She's saying, what's up, bro? What is going on uh, with reselling tools and software that come uh, at cost such as eFlip, et cetera. What are the mainstays you can used uh what are the main stays you use that find most valuable um I'm not sure what what you're asking there what are the main strategies uh so most most profitable you should be thinking you should be thinking how can i stay in business how can i buy these books and have them increase in price predictably, consistently, time and time again, and make a profit. Um, the most profit is not necessarily the best strategy. There's certain strategies that are going to allow you to make a thousand percent ROI, but they don't necessarily have the highest demand books. They don't have the most predictability. There's just other bad things that come with it. Um, I really lay out like the whole process of, of how to find these profitable books and flip them in my course, buy low, sell high. It's my online arbitrage course. So there's going to be a link. I'll add the link for um, the wait list for that course um, below. Currently the book business blueprint is the course linked below, but I have a whole separate online arbitrage course where I really I go in depth and I, I talk about what, what things to look out for, like certain red flags, what like, what are trends of books that you shouldn't buy? And making this YouTube video now, I'm really realizing how much information <laughs> there is that I just can't throw out there. Cause like I had the intention when I made this video, just throw everything out there, but there's so many little things that you have to look out for. You ever gonna come talk in the UK, man, I wish, who is that? Literally says, man. Junk man saying it's got IQ. All right, I missed some of y'all's questions. I'm going to scroll up real quick. If you guys have questions about online arbitrage or just selling books in general, I'm here for you. Man is saying beer, pen, uh, pen paper ready. I have been buying law, nursing, and medical books. Should I send them in now or, or hold off until textbook season? Great question, Garrett. Uh, so I recommend sending everything in now. And you're going to see a little bit of a May spike. Uh, so it might be too late now to send books in and have them go active, but there is a price spike that's occurring in May because uh, there's students that go, are going back to class right now. Even though everybody's at home quarantined, kids are still going back to school. Uh, so what I would do is I would take I would take all your books, send them in at the price that you want them to sell at, and if they sell early, great. If if they don't sell early wait till you know about the third week of august when textbook season when the demand really increases and then reprice if need be but if you set that book at the price that you want it to sell at which is you know it should be your approved list price you should have a list you get you guys can model my list this is my list right here I'll share it with you guys one more time so here's that formula someone was asking about earlier and it's just it's pulling from these cells, but you should have a list with the ISBN number, approved buy price, approved list price. Um, we also track all of our books on Keepa, 
So if if the book does decrease uh, below our threshold price, we get notified. So if I was tracking this book and I wanted to get notified whenever it dropped below 25 bucks, boom, I'm going to get an email notification. I'll open up the app and, and I'll purchase the book. So all you have to do, do to do that is click on track product, update existing product, and then enter it in there. Enter the, whatever your desired price is and then click on update tracking. So currently I'm tracking this at $24. So whenever it drops below $24, I get notified. This is a very safe book, guys. Seriously, if you guys want to purchase this book right now, go for it. I'm going to get a little bit nerdy on you guys. I don't like to get too caught in the weeds, but I can tell you um, whenever the used price count goes down like this, so if you guys see at the very bottom, this is the used price count or used price. I've been working all day, guys. My, my words aren't even coming out right. The used offer count. And I gave up coffee last week. So used offer count goes from 300 all the way down. I'm looking at this very bottom graph. It goes from 300 all the way down to 50. And then it slowly increases. And then we see it go from about 260 all the way down to 60 and it's just not recovering like it usually is it usually recovers a little bit faster so there's there's like we learned in school there's supply and demand and price as supply increases price decreases as supply decreases price increases so the supply is very low so the price is going to increase i guarantee you this next textbook season i mean things are weird this year um with the whole quarantine thing it'll be interesting to see how things play out i still think there's going to be huge price spikes but it's interest. it's going to be interesting because this this used offer count is not going back up and uh we're probably going to see a little bit of decrease in demand as well because there probably won't be as many students going back to school but it'll probably balance out and we'll probably still see a healthy a healthy spike all right let's do two more questions three more questions i'm getting out of here is it dangerous to, to use ungating services i've never used one i know there is a popular guru type guy but I was concerned about it. Uh, I realize it's overpriced, but if it's safe, I'm just worried about someone putting in invoices on my account. I mean, getting on gated, it's, it's like, I don't think it's a big secret. Like you literally just get 10 orders of the unit that you're trying to get ungated in, make sure you're gated in that unit and then uh, send it to Amazon, go to add a product page and try to get ungated. I got ungated in Lego doing that. And I'm not like a huge retail arbitrage person. I just had a Lego book and I was pissed I couldn't sell it. So I bought 10 units of Lego, a, a 10 units of a Lego book from, from my distributor and uh, got ungated just like that. Some textbooks are old versions and become obsolete. Do you just look at Keepagraph to see if it's still good? Um, yeah, Keep is all that matters, man. If if Keepa shows my rule is if there was four price spikes in the last textbook seasons, meaning it goes up and then back down again, up and then back down again for the last four textbook seasons, at least four, four price spikes. Uh, I purchased the book. I don't care what's going on. I don't care for new additions out. I don't care. It there's it. It has history of going up and down for the last couple of years. There's still books I flipped that have two editions ahead of the book, but for whatever reason, people still buy the older edition. Uh, my bad, Romer. The way I worded that question made no sense. I just meant the different softwares. Uh, you, oh, okay. So the softwares I use in my business are, and I'll link all these in the description below, um, Scout IQ, obviously, for going out and finding books, eFlip for 
flipping books, online arbitrage. I use eFlip as like a list generator, Acceler list to list my books and then refund refunds manager to get me my money back. So if you guys don't know about refunds manager, you should hundred percent sign up today. It's a, a service where they go into your account cases for you for inventory that Amazon has lost. So if you guys are larger sellers, you probably have hundreds, if not thousands of dollars that Amazon owes you. And you can get that. Um, you can get it yourself. You could go into Amazon. You, you could dig for these cases and look for items they lost. Look for, um, look for maybe when they checked into FBA shipment, you shipped 21 items. They only checked in 20. Uh, you, you can look for those scenarios in open cases yourself, or you could have refunds manager do it for you. They do take 30% of your, whatever they get you back. So if they get you back a hundred bucks, they charge you $30, but that's still $70 for you. So um, definitely look into that. I have a lot of restricted textbooks coming your way, by the way. Much love, man. Everybody that uses restrictedinventory.com. Much love. I really grind hard. Well done, sir. And welcome to the freaking well show. I love that song. The buyback bookstores are closed. That will lower use count. Yeah. A lot of weird stuff going on. There's a ton of weird stuff. You guys, I'll also link in the description. If you guys have not uh, watched my Facebook marketplace hustle, there's so much opportunity out there right now because the buyback stores aren't open. You can purchase these books from students on Facebook marketplace and flip them. And I, I break down the techniques to use and there's I'll, I'll link both my videos. There's a second video where I talk about really another secret to uh, within Facebook to get even more books. It's um, pretty cool stuff. That's it guys. I'm going to go work out. I've been working out David Goggin style during this quarantine, really get my workout in probably been doing, hundreds of push-ups every day crazy amounts but uh yeah the link to my course is below if you guys if you guys got value from that video like comment subscribe trying to give everything away here out in the open for free but obviously to make to make a place it's there's so much value in having curated content and what i mean by that is having a place where all the content is i walk you through it i literally teach you how to do like how to set up the softwares once you're in the software, what triggers do you, I, I, I walk you through, I basically, I teach you how to wipe your ass in this course. I really lay everything out. Um, and I, I've learned a lot making this course. I've learned a lot about just getting people results. And I, I, I hope this course gets people results and whoever's in that course, I'm going to make sure you get results and fine tune the course until it is a result making machine. Boss lady, I'm pretty sure this is a Moroccan boss lady. She said, would you still source now uh, with a mask and glove? So currently I'm not going out sourcing just because I'm working on building my business in other ways. I've delegated a lot of that. Um, but yeah, I probably would. That's just because I have a strong immune system. Not worried about getting sick. Someone else saying, got a big box for you as well. Much love, guys. All right, guys. I'm going to get my workout in. Peace out. Get your workout in tonight. Get some online arbitrage going. Make some money.